What's the architecture of Amarone? In other words, what are the building blocks of one of Italy's best Italian red wines? I'm Tony Margiata. If you want the inside scoop on Italian wines, make sure you subscribe to Gladiator Wine TV so you don't miss out on anything. So the world famous Amarone is actually a blend of several native grapes from Valpolicella in the Veneto region found in northeastern Italy. The two main grapes that you should remember are Corvina and Rondinella. These grapes combined make up the majority of the blend. The rest of the grapes are used in single digit percentages. Let's go over the grapes that make up Amarone one at a time. Corvina is the dominant grape in Amarone and it must be between 45 and 95 percent of the blend. Corvina is named after the Italian word corvo, which is a type of bird found in the Valpolicella. Apparently, this bird flies into the Corvina vineyards to eat the delicious grapes that make Amarone. So that's where the name likely came from. The grape produces a translucent red color that makes a glass of Amarone look like you're drinking a liquid jewel. The color is deceiving though. Many people think a light color uh, in a red wine produces light bodied wines, but that's not the case here. Corvina produces full bodied wines. It gives lots of red fruits, floral notes, spices, has velvety tannins, which allows Amarone to age for decades. Rondinella is the second most prevalent grape in Amarone. There needs to be between five and 30% of Rondinella in the blend. While they say the flavors in Rondinella are neutral, we know the grape does really, really well under a passimento. And so after the grapes dry, they produce intense perfumes and have high levels of sugar, which eventually turns into high levels of alcohol during fermentation. You can't have Amarone without high levels of alcohol. So Rondinella produces the backbone needed to make this wine. There are two other minor grapes that are commonly found in Amarone. One of them has gone out of fashion, while the other one is being used more and more. Molinara is a native grape that was traditionally found in Amarone, but today many producers have sort of abandoned it. The reason is that Molinara, when it's made into a mono varietal wine, it's very light bodied. It is somewhat fragrant, but it has a very, very translucent pink color. Molinara combined with the already translucent Corvina produced in Amarone uh, that is sort of even lighter in color and arguably more elegant. This is a question of style though, and it's not a question of quality. It's entirely up to the winemaker to decide. Then we have Osoleta. This is the other native grape found in Amarone wines today, and we're finding them more and more. Osoleta is a powerful grape that adds lots of fruit, lots of acidity, and structure to Amarone, even with just a tiny amount added to the blend. Because of its structure, it contributes even more to the ageability of Amarone wines. So now you know the grapes that make up the architecture of Amarone. If you want to learn more about Amarone, I have an entire series of videos about this grand wine right here on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to Gladiator Wine TV by clicking the subscribe button below. And if you're looking for a fun activity, I can host a virtual Italian wine class for your group of friends, family, colleagues, or clients. My email address is found in the description below. And remember, great wines are not made in great numbers. See you in the next video.